allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Introduction to board members. To my far left is Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue, Don Ganarelli, Rick Rains, and on Zoom we have Les Bodwell. We also have Irish Griffith, the code enforcement officer, um, Hannah Watson from SMPDC, and we do have a special guest, uh, James Bellissimo, our town manager, but he's not he's just sitting in the public. He's, he's here. He's here as a. As he's a, here. Yeah. So, uh, Moral support. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there's no public hearings today, and we'll open up the first public comment. Okay. Just come up, uh, state your name and address, and your comment. My name is um, Rebecca Pringle-Gleski. I live at 44 Moulton Street. Um, we are currently the site of a very large, well, tiny really, but large for if you live near it, uh, trenching and road widening uh, program phase one of a, of a two, at least two part, phase two is a park at the bottom of our hill. Um, we've been told throughout uh, the last little bits that your road is going to be fixed, your drainage is going to be fixed. And so when this is happening and we're like, why? We were not notified. Nobody gave us any written notification. And, and it was quite traumatic to have this massive equipment just trudging away. I believe the road is not in the right location. I have my deeds, and I have told um, the construction people, the engineer who was out there, and I have talked with the town manager several times about it as well. I have, we have a 45-foot right-of-way in front of our house between our house and the neighbor across the way. If you take 45 feet and you cut it in half, which is where the center line of the road should be, that's 22 and a half feet. If you have our road is 18 feet wide, so that's nine feet should be on my side, right? So now you should be at 13 and a half feet to my house, to my edge of my property. But if, as they say, the center line, the road is 33 feet, and they go from my house to that distance, and then they come back nine feet, they end up being more on our side of the road, which means it takes out our front yard. It means this roadway is where we step out of our house onto this roadway. So this is a major thing that should, if we had been notified, we would have had time to go and press this issue. It's not been pressed. This whole thing up our entire hill has been trenched. Every single person's yards, bushes, everything has been stripped from their house. People, there's the guy at the bottom. It yeah, is literally yeah, just this far. Speak the microphone just so the people have okay. It is literally the step out his steps into the trench. And that trench isn't even as far over as the road is going to go. So the first problem I have is that the, the right-of-way needs to be researched. They gave us right-of-way plans. They say 33 feet. Where did this come from? I don't know. I tried to get the plans and, this, and the information about this. I was told it was online. I had a friend who's good at this. I have old software. I had a hard time finding it. She looked for an hour. She couldn't find it. I came back to get these plans on Tuesday, but it was voting day, and I was, and it was late in the day because that's when I could get here. It was like 4.25, and I was told that um, they're not accessible right now. They're way in the back. You'll have to come back the next day. I wasn't able to do that. So I have not been able to look at the plans. My major bone of contention is because I'm a civil engineer. I'm a drainage engineer. I was the state of New Hampshire highway uh, drainage engineer for the whole highway department. Anything that was too complicated for um, the local areas, they were sent to the state highway. I was the one who reviewed those. Since then, I've worked in many other engineering firms and done a lot of drainage, roadways, sewers, all this kind of work. So I'm not just somebody who has no clue. So when I looked at this and I said, why do you have to come all this far over to my yard? Because this, uh, you're widening this to 28 feet? We are a little, tiny, historic community. You're going to go 28 feet? And they said, well, that's the paved drainage way. I'm like, paved drainage way? I've, all the highway I've ever, I called the former commissioner of the Department of Transportation, who was a friend of mine, 
and asked her, have you ever seen this in a residential area anywhere? No. These are the plans that I, were sent, I was sent that show paved swales on the side. Um, I have a note, email that came from James and from the engineer, and it says, um, to summarize this project, we are replacing the stormwater infrastructure with new pipes, catch basins, paved swales, and full depth reconstruction of Molten Street and parts of 1st, 2nd, Copeland, and, and where mostly they intersect with Molten Street. The water outlets to filter the pond by the river in the area that will become the Riverfront Park. We were not notified of this major project that has been hell on all of us. I'm like shaking. I had to go to a, a restaurant to hand write out my notes and I didn't get a chance to type them because of all the just craziness. My cats are throwing up, my chickens are pecking each other. I've had to move them into cat carriers and put them in, in someone's barn because of this and we were not notified. So there's a whole bunch more on that but, but so that's the, the little gist of why we're here. And we took some signatures we can only do it at night, it's late, people have things. So we have only got a fraction of the people that we've talked to and some people have said, I don't feel comfortable signing because I don't want repercussions. Give, be that what it is, that's what they've said. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people signed here from our street. There's many more people that have come out in the street and been upset about this. So this is a major thing. Tonight, one person, two people had to work tonight one person has their a kid's uh, concert, the concert that's at the school. I don't know how many else are there. Um, there are very valid reasons that other people are not here tonight that would have been here. So our petition says to the Berwick Town Manager, the Berwick Planning Board, the Berwick Town Road Agent, and any other town, state, or other officials who are party to this project on Molten First, Second, Copeland, Lewis, uh, I forgot Lewis Street, in Berwick, Maine, we, the people who live in the vicinity of this proposed Molten Street Park, order that the town cease and desist all work on this project until such a time as the people who live in the vicinity of the project are given written notice and the proper course of action, including public meetings, hearings, and plan reviews are met. Once we've had public written notice, then we have meetings. If you have meetings and you don't tell us that we should be there, that doesn't count. Um, in our town, all abutters must be notified in writing by the entity doing a project before the project may proceed. If the project is a major project, as this one is, notification and hearings must occur. We were not notified, therefore this project is unacceptable. And I talked to Beth uh, O'Connor, some of you may know her, who would put holes through the roof. What? They did this without notifying you? It's not a legal project, it cannot go on. So right there, that's the beginning and that's what needs to happen in that part. Because I'm an engineer, I looked at this property this project and I'm thinking why in the world would they have five foot swales paved swales I'm driving around you look Sawmill Hill goes the same slope as Molten Street there are no paved drainage swales on Sawmill Hill there's 16 inches of gravel on the side which is what we had for 150 years and it worked fine so why do we need these five foot paved swales I kept thinking about it and asking people and thinking about it couldn't come up with any reason until it dawned on me when I went over to Summersworth because the park plans say that there's a footbridge to Summersworth and I've said, because I'm looking at this and one of the things I said to the engineer is there's not enough parking here. If you're going to put a state park here, which the engineer told me it was a state park, that may or may not be true, but what he told me is a state park and they have to do things to state park specifications. That needs to be clarified, but that is what he told me, which sent me into a whole other orbit. So... If this is going to be a state park, it's going to be advertised as a hiking, waterfalls, all these other things, and there are six parking spaces. It's not enough parking spaces. When I went over to Summersworth and I stepped out of my car and I looked down at the parking along the side of the road, I said to myself, hmm, what is five feet wide and is adjacent to a road and is paved? Parking. I have a feeling that the reason this is paved is because it's parking for that park. And once it's built and it's been pushing through like crazy without notifying anyone, the parking will already be there. And so when people complain about the parking situation, they're going to say it's already there. Five foot, pay that's going to have people parking in our little tiny neighborhood right next to our houses, right next to our houses. This is a major problem that should have been discussed. We should have been notified. 
the historicity of this. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the history of where Moulton Street is, but this is the primary location for the Lord family, for Sarah, for Black Sarah Lord, for the Hersham uh, Mansion, for a whole lot of history. The first Lord Mills are right at Moulton Street where they're filling in for parking right now. These are archaeological dig sites that should have been noted. The historical, the old historical people who know what's up, they should have been notified. They should have been asked what's going on here. I don't, I haven't seen any of the permits. Were they done for, for cutting so much trees, right? You can only cut 40% over a 10 year period of time near the river. Was this met? I don't know. They don't have filter fabric down to catch the flow. This has been all dug up, all this rain that we've had, we have had no catch basins, we've just had a road. Because they took our old ones out, they put the new ones in, and they covered them over because the whole system isn't connected yet, the grates and what have you are on there. So we've been living in a mess, just saying. Anyhow, Summersworth knows nothing about this, so anything about a footbridge, the, 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 the town knows nothing about it. They said, we don't even have any property until past GE. And the building that is across, they said, well, maybe it's going to the, um, uh, what's the name there? Chinberg. Chinberg. He went to school with Chinberg. Chinberg. So he put a call into Chinbergs, and they said, we have no idea about this. So I don't know if they are planning to do parking in Summersworth, but they have not talked to Summersworth about it. And I don't know if this is a state park or not, but I need to know the truth of this, and somebody's got to dig into this and find out. We need to know. Um... The m biggest thing, because these are my flowers, and I don't want them dug up. And you know what? Because I was there the day they were digging, and because I told them that my water line comes... You know when something happens to you in your life, and you're really, really upset about it, and the Bible says, be thankful in everything? Well, here's the thing. For 20 years, I've been pissed, because I have these flowers that I love, and my water line comes out right in the middle of them, and we had it, it eroded down to a pinhole. And we had to have them come out to fix it. They came out twice. And the second time the guy came out, he said, I have a confession to make. I am not the water guy. I was the road guy. I just got made the water guy. Sweetest person. So, so I don't know what to do. I cannot find the water main in Moulton Street. So I'm going to have to put your water line down to First Street, which he did. And went down First Street. And because I'm an engineer, I have a gravel parking area. It is to the dimensions of a parking area. It's nine feet per space. I have three spaces at 27 feet by blah, blah, blah. It, That's what I designed it for. Left space for snow. It goes back to my grapevines. Now they're coming in. I'm going to lose those three, my kids' parking spaces, plus my space up by the house. I will not be able to park this. I'm going to lose four parking spaces, right? My water line goes. They went down the side, and then they decided there's a catch basin there. So they just went through my gravel without telling me. I didn't tell them. They didn't know. There's filter fabric under there. There's 18 inches of engineered crushed gravel, not regular crushed gravel. This is interlocking crushed gravel that was made for a certain project. I got a little bit of it on the side. Dug it all up, twisted it all up, and I've been mad. But you know what? Because my water line was there, and because the guy was not the water guy, and he said, we should probably should put some insulation on this, we cut some insulation from the project we were doing and placed it on top of that water line. When this guy was digging, he hit that insulation, and the guy said, there's some insulation in there. I told him where the water line was. I told the engineer where the water line was. I told everybody who would listen where my water line was. Nobody believed me because the marker is over here because they went down and then they went jigger. And they just thought I went jigger through my yard. It didn't. I, and he hit it within three inches of where I told him it was. But because the water line was there along my bushes, they moved the pipe out around it. So I'm the only one on my side of Moulton Street that has any plants next to their house because of a mistake that was made 20 years ago. Thank you, Lord. Um, this whole thing has been so nerve-wracking to all of us. And as an engineer, I'm looking at these plans. I have been asked in the past to review engineering plans. I had too many things going on I, for, for this town. I, I didn't do it. Um, but I can tell you that looking at the profile, when they were building it, designing it, I said, can you lower the profile six to eight inches in front of my house? Because every time you've paved, you've raised the road up. And my driveway is a very, very shallow driveway. And I have windows, old windows that aren't even windows. They're steel grates that go right into my basement. We have foam insulation pushed up against it, but there's not even a window there. And the water is backing up in my driveway because it can't get out. They're raising the elevation five feet 
not lower, I mean five inches. And I was told in the letter from the engineer, well, your house is at this elevation and the catch patient is there, so the water will run. I don't know who could make a comment like that who knows anything about water because it doesn't go uphill. You can talk to water all day long, it will not go uphill unless it's going super, super fast. It's not in my driveway. So as currently it pools there, it freezes there. The water that comes down the ditch that's already there pools in my driveway and freezes. We salt the heck out of it, we chop it up, we move it every freeze-thaw cycle that we have. So across the way, just right across the street from me, my neighbor has a big wide gravel driveway area. And every rainstorm, the gravel comes down the ditch, rain comes down the ditch, takes his gravel and dumps it in the catch basin and the town is forever clearing that, that catch basin out. So if you lower the road, the reason it does that is because the road is so high it forces the water into his gravel and washes it out. If you lowered the road five or six inches rather than rising it, you will fix these problems. And the pipe is down so deep at this point, it, it, you have perfectly tons of space to do that. Go down a little bit further. On our hill down at the bottom, there's a catch basin. A lot of water goes down the hill. All my roof drains, all my, my driveways, been doing it for 150 years, whatever, um, catches leaves. And it goes really fast. It pushes a lot of leaves down, gets into that catch basin. They always get full. No matter how we as neighbors try to keep the leaves out of it, it gets <coughs> full of leaves, bumps over that, <coughs> goes across the way, and floods out the neighbors. Like just about every big storm we have. So... I would suggest that you put a catch basin, even though they're closer than you would normally put a catch basin, I would put one part way up the hill where it starts to go faster to catch most of the water when it's going fairly slow. That will improve the whole situation there. Then you get down to, to Second Street, on um, First Street, they went this far, but they didn't go the extra 30 feet to catch the last pipe that's flat. So that pipe, which takes water across First Street, is full of silt, it always is. And so all the water on this side of the street builds up until it gets high enough at the crown of the road, it floods over the road, and floods the people. So why not go one more catch basin further and give that, because now you're down low, you can give more slope to that pipe, you can take care of that whole problem very cheaply compared to everything else you're doing. Go down the hill some more, there's a section at the bottom of Moulton Street that's really deep. It's a steep, steep section, the leaves get there in the fall, it's, it's treacherous when it's icy. It's really treacherous. It's a big hump right there. And the man's driveway that's there, is, it's, it's a huge slope off the road. Take that hump out. It, it would make the whole transition. If you're tearing the whole road up and you're redoing it a full depth reconstruction, make the road a good alignment that you could. It should be in the easement, in the middle of the easement, where it should be. It, should be, it could be a, such a lovely road, you could put the right catch basins in, you could make this all beautiful. That is not what's happening. So we're going to pay, or I don't know who's paying, that's another person's question, uh, for a very expensive situation that's not going to work. And as an engineer, this drives me crazy. So I'm just saying, the other thing I was supposed to speak to a little bit about the history is where the parking lot is, where they've been pushing dirt to put the parking lot for this park is right where the Lord Mills were, and they talk about that being a archaeological site. They need to talk to the old-time engineering people, I mean, uh, history people, and see, because there's two sites in town that they know about, and they won't tell anybody because they don't want the um, artifacts taken from there. So they always need to be contacted before any of these kind of projects because they are protecting these sites for, until a time when we have money to do a proper archaeological dig. So no one knows, if they, but it would make sense to me, these are founding fathers of, of our town, that there's probably really significant archaeological stuff there. And I don't know that that's been taken care of. I don't know if the EPA correct uh, um, permits have been taken. I highly doubt it, given how nothing else was noticed, things weren't done, but I haven't seen the plans. So as you can see, there's a lot of issues that we have with this. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to, who wants to go next? Lynn? Pretty much. Okay, yeah. if Lynn's not going to go next, Lynn, I'm going to speak for you then. Uh, Linda, I, I, I'm going to make this quick. Linda is 75 years old. She is the peppiest, hardest working person you could know. You can't keep up with her. She had, when she came home at 9.30 at night after an 11 hour day, and she comes in and there is an excavator on top of the trench box and pipes and she could not get to her house. She had to go around this stuff at night, 
holding her little phone and her things and no hands and she slipped and fell and she wiped out her hip and she's hobbling and she's just no no I got it on heating pads I'm gonna be okay well she's the sweetest lady in the world and I am pissed that these people did not nobody talked to us about where they stored equipment I said you can store it in my I have a back road you can store equipment there They've put these excavators next to people that we know have tiny children. So when you're trying to go out the door and you're holding this and you're holding that kid and you have to go around this excavator that's literally right this far from your house, that's not acceptable. I don't care if it's right of way or what. That is dangerous. And we've all put up with, I've had a nine by nine by massive trench box thing put in the middle of my yard, not on the right of way, totally in my yard, crushing my flowers. We've been through heck with what they've done to us on this project, and we were not notified. Therefore, we believe this project needs to stop. It needs to stop and figure out what's going on. Because if you're not going to put these paved uh, swales, which that's the other thing I forgot. The pavement. There's a, there's a retention pond at the bottom of the hill, which we've been told was for uh, clearing out the water. It will do that a bit, but... The reason that I believe it's there, because I've done enough of these, these projects, is if you create more impervious area, which 10 feet of roadway creates a lot of impervious area, you have got to catch the peak flow and meter it out. You cannot flow it any faster. And that's why I wanted the, the calculations, because I wanted to see how they calculated this. You cannot let any more water out than what the peak flow was before you started. So I believe that is the primary reason for this pond. There is another pond looking down there, which may be a sedimentation pond, but the primary, that's, that is something. And so why would we put these five-foot monstrosities that nobody, not even the commissioner of transportation, would, can ever foresee why you would need this one? It's worked for 150 years. Why would you add all of that bituminous material in our neighborhood? Why would you wreck our yards, our everything, to put this in that should not be there except for parking for this park, that we have not been told what's going on with it. We were told that it was going to be a little nature. I went to the first couple of these Envision Berwick meetings, and it was a little nature path with a couple benches in the woods. Well, it's been <laughs> cut, and it is not that. And the neighbor next door told us that the that he's the one who told us initially that it was a state park. And then I went back and talked to him, and he's like, oh, no, not a state park, it's just a park. And he said, the, he's the first one that told me, and that's why I asked the town, the, the engineer for this project. And he showed me a plan, and the entrance to this thing is literally feet from his driveway, right next to him, with no notice that this was going on. So this whole thing, with no notice, is just absolutely ridiculous, and it's illegal. And we don't want to go to court. We love our town. We want to work together. We want to make this happen. I mean, if there's going to be a park there, well, it's a place where there were Native Americans and, and our industrial uh, folks that set up our town. Why wouldn't we make a park that honored them, honored the people who were there, our ancestors and the Native American ancestors? If there's going to be a river park, which I've heard about that too, why not make access on 236 where that other trail is? There's a whole big, huge field there. You could, it's wetland, but you could suspend something there, or you could, it could be worked out, and there could be space, and you could have your river walk in all different directions and not impact all of these houses. There are hundreds of houses within the impact area of this that would have to be notified because it's phase one and phase two. We were told that the drainage was just a little town thing. It's not. It's part of phase one and phase two of this park, and that's why this massive road system has to be put in here. This, this neighborhood is a walking neighborhood. We walk, everybody walks in the street on our neighborhood and we love it. People come from other places, even from summer work, they come and walk because it's peaceful and quiet. People have chickens, the chickens walk all around our neighborhood and we love it. We, we, my cats stare cars down. They sit there because, and then all the cars drive very slowly. What's gonna happen when they put this runway in the middle of our two loops of walking? It's gonna destroy the peace and harmony that we have. It's gonna destroy the history of the place, it's going to destroy so much, and it's not necessary. We could just fix the road, and why are we doing a full depth reconstruct of this road? Unless you have to have new requirements to meet state requirements. Because a state requirement road depth is different from a town requirement road depth. So I have all these questions, I need answers for them. Maybe Jim can answer them, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder. And this is only a portion of what I had. If I, just, I couldn't get it all together. So. Just a reminder, Mr. Chair, that policies for the meetings are five minutes maximum per speaker. 
Well, I took everybody else's here, time. So it's, it's, yeah. um, I just, yeah, I'll just say one thing. I just say okay. that. Uh, James Bullismo, town manager. Um, I'll work with the project engineer and project manager and get a full written statement to all your all your questions and comments, point by point, uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, can you clarify? Meantime, can this project stop and not get Can paid? you clarify the park, the park issue, whether it's going to be a state park or not? Yeah, there's no there's no plans for it to be a state park. The plans is for it to be a uh, passive recreational area. Yeah, the town owns the land, right? Yeah, with some ben we have no intentions of it being a state park. The proposed footbridge is a long envisioned um, pathway that would connect to the Chimberg properties. Chimberg's aware of it. Um, there's no active development on that on that part of it now. Um, it's something that we need to develop Great Falls Park before we even worry about a footbridge. Um, paved swales. There's no intentions at all of using that as on street parking. Definitively, no. Um, you know, we can make that a condition. It's not in front of the planning board, but there's no, absolutely no plans of it being on street parking. But um, definitely want to address the concerns. And Sarah has gotten to this, this point that which caused you frustration. So, like I said, we'll do a full written response to all the questions and comments from both the project manager and the engineer. I'll talk. I'll talk with Pat to see what's what's the plan for this weekend. And see where we can hold off until. I, I can't guarantee we're gonna we're gonna stop, but I will. I'll talk to him tonight and tomorrow to see. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? What you gotta really come back up to the mic just for the people at home watching, sorry. so they can uh, hear. Him. Sorry. I, I would like to know the reason for the paved drainage swales, because it it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's a good question. Any other public comment? Okay. Moving along, approval of minutes, February 15, I saw the, I read through the minutes. I find them complete and accurate, so I, I move that we accept them. I'll second it. Okay, for the discussion, uh, we'll do a roll call as uh, Les is on Zoom. So, Les? You just have to say yes. I'm in favor. Okay. Paul? Yes. Jared? Yes. Paul, yes. Yes. Don? Yes. All right. All right. Minutes approved. Old Business, Mackenzie, Minor Subdivision, Final Plan, Diamond Hill Road, R29, Lot 16, R40, Lots 10A. Good evening. You want me to take it away? Go. Yes, please. Good to go. My name is Austin Fagan. I'm with BH2M, BH2M Engineers, and I'm here representing Dave Springer. Uh, the, project, the project before us tonight is a four-lot uh, subdivision that will be served off of a paved private way. Uh, you may recognize this project from a few months ago when the board saw it. I was deemed incomplete at that time, but we have now submitted all the documentation, uh, and Southern Maine uh, Planning SMPDC has said uh, we've now met all the requirements. Let's see. So, as I said, four lot cluster subdivision. Uh, lots will be served with private wells and or private septics and drilled wells. Um, we have shown suggested house locations, septic locations, and no well zones on the plan to show that each lot can be developed. Stormwater from the project will be contained or detained within uh, vegetated swales along the roadway and discharged to level spreaders and vegetated buffers for low impact development techniques. And these will uh, these buffers will lead down to the existing stream on site. We've sized the stream crossing culvert to pass um, anything up to a 100-year storm. So realistically, there will be no adverse impacts uh, to the stream or any of the infrastructure that's proposed. Uh, currently, we have received DEP permits for a NERPA PBR and a stormwater PBR. 
We've also applied for an Army Corps of Engineers main general permit. I believe, Mr. Raines, you had a question last time about if IFNW or um, other regulatory agencies of that nature would be uh, consulted for this. Um, we are still working with the Army Corps to, for, uh, for them to meet with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife just to verify that they're okay with everything that's going on. And uh, we believe that the um, main general permit for wetland fills will, will be coming our way uh, very soon. Okay. Uh, there were a few comments previously um, requesting test pits in the existing road, I believe, just to make sure what the material is. We have put on the roadway sheets that we are expecting a full depth reconstruction of this road just to verify that everything will be built to, to spec. Um, and yeah, other than that, it's a relatively straightforward project, uh, minor subdivision, I believe, since it's four lots. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Thank you. I have a question right out the gate for you. Yeah. Hi, Austin. Hey, how are um, you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, I have these stormwater management reports, but these are dated December 2023. Did you have to change that since then? No, I have not. So it's probably it's probably an error on that. It's probably... No, wait, no. Well, these were with your original submission. Okay. Do you have an updated one you can provide us? Uh, if provide that's what me? that's what we did provide, it still has the uh, the same stormwater infrastructure, so there okay, won't be any changes changed. to it. Yeah. Okay, that was all I needed to know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, I see that um, we have an, a letter that was sent in in regards to the McKenzie project that we should probably read into. So I was looking at that as well. Um, so first thing what we should do is because uh, pending application completeness, okay. we may be scheduling a public hearing. Yes. If we schedule a public hearing, then that can be noted then. Perfect. Um, yep. so is there anything that you guys, any questions, concerns? Oh, good. I'd make a motion that uh, we find this application complete. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Jerry. Jerry. Uh, further discussion? I would just simply ask um, or have it be noted that we are still waiting for confirmation from Army Corps and other agencies, which I assume will take place before final yes. Is, yes. is taken care of. Um, so roll call, Les? Yes. Okay. Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, next is discussion about uh, public hearing. Um, seeing that I know that there has been an abutter that has come in in a previous meeting, um, I kind of think that we should hold a public hearing on this. And just get their yeah. output on input on this. Yeah, I'm in favor. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Less. What do you think? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, the public hearing now. So the next meeting we have. First of all, doesn't really leave us a whole lot of time to get the advertisement out there. But that one, I expect there's that's going to be quite timely given what's on the agenda for that okay um, so if it's okay with the applicant can we push you out to the following meeting if that works best for you I'm sure it'll work for Dave it'll otherwise it's going to be probably a midnight meeting well, <laughs> we'll, we'll at 9 30 oh. that there's no more midnight meetings thank uh, you we, we've talked about this before <laughs> yeah this is uh, like the uh, last 10 30 meeting was way too much for everyone including the people at home watching so oh, yes. um yeah and that'll give us plenty of time to uh to work with the army corps make sure, sure. we get everything prior to that yeah. so. so that would Perfect. be april 4th the public hearing all right all right there you go thanks for your time yep. thank you thank you all right Next is new business, JSC Great Falls Construction Revision to Existing Plans, View 004-146, Zone BCI, Minor Changes.
Okay. Good evening. My name is John Smith with Great Falls Construction, and uh, <coughs> we're here tonight with um, two of the buildings that are going across the street. It's the number 16 and 18 Sullivan Street, and our original submission <coughs> had these more as just square boxes, and because of the changes, I know we did show them last time we were here, um, but we didn't, I think it, it came to light that we needed to do a an actual presentation and, and uh, around it just to to uh, run it through planning board. So that's what we're here for tonight. Um, it's 12 yeah. unit. Oh, um, sorry. Should I? It's actually the uh, change, and Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, the change is the reason you need to be here is not about the bump outs. It's about the fact that the original plans designated the first floor of those two buildings as uh, split between commercial. yeah commercial. commercial. And you guys are looking to use it as all residential, so that yeah. changes the commercial residential ratio. Okay, yeah. So that, <coughs> that is, so yeah, our submission talked about the first floor commercial slash residential, and the, the, um, so right now it's a 12 unit residential building. Each one is 12, so a total of 24. Um, and that's, and, and then that's the, uh, the style of it outside. Um, other than that, I think. It, That's it. Yeah, that that kind of. Hannah, it. was that everything? Mike, can you ask her? Uh, I believe so. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just realized my camera was on this whole time. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I believe that was all. It's just the change of use from the different number of residential units. That's my issue. Does the. Uh, Intended use converting to all residential change the need for parking additional or less or uh, or does it not change at all? Um, I'm not sure if that really I believe an Hannah impact. is it the intent that there's one building on the overall site plan that is not yet designed because once the other buildings are up then the final calculations for parking are going to be done and that last building is a maybe is it, am I thinking of the wrong thing you may be correct but I don't know I'm will sorry. this will this I impact the parking can you answer can you are you able to answer the board member's question? Does it impact does it cause a change to the required parking? Are you asking me or him? You, because he's not oh. sure either. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not sure. He looked at me, I tried to answer and now I look at you. <laughs> Give me one second. I can well while you're looking that up and I can speak to um, the, you know, I mean, e each one of these buildings, uh, especially the larger ones, as we move forward, are coming back before planning board, and um, and that, and it will kind of, you know, they'll be refined as we move forward. What we call the rear quadrant, I think, is the one that you were talking about, and that's a large building in the rear quadrant. That's our last phase of the project, um, and so you know, we've submitted that as part of the overall project as of now but again it needs to come each one of these needs to come through so um if uh if for some reason i mean you know we're talking about <laughs> relatively negligible impacts on these here um but cumulatively if there are challenges as we move forward then we have the ability to adjust on as we get to these these other units so john how you doing les bogwell hi um I have a question. So, so eliminating the commercial on the first floor is that commercial space going to be um, built someplace else, or are we just eliminating the commercial space from the overall project in these two buildings? Well, it's it's in these two buildings, and what they were, um, we you know, our thought honestly it was commercial or residential. I think that you can read it either way in in our submission, and I think a lot of these things are intended to be refined. Um, but I mean, we're a big fan of mixed use and everything, you know, most everything you do is mixed use. But in this case and where these are situated, it really didn't seem to make sense to, to have, 
uh, commercial units there. And, you know, we, we do, we've got lots of other commercial units, but we don't have a, a plan to say, you know, take those two commercial units from there and put them somewhere else. I think our commercial unit count was approximately 37, if I remember correctly, in our original submission. Um, but we, what we don't know is, you know, some of these are liners and in, and even in 12 Sullivan Street, I think we have a certain number of units, but one tenant has taken two units. They did remain separated, so they still present as two units, but we don't really know as you move forward on some of these spaces if, if, uh, you know, two sort of smaller commercial line of spaces get combined, um, or, uh, or not. And so things like that, I think we'll, We'll, we'll kind of figure out along the way. But I get, think the direct answer to the question is we don't have uh, a, a plan to put sort of two more elsewhere because most of our footprints <coughs> are designed based on our site plan. And there isn't, there's some flexibility, but not a lot. Did that answer your question, Les? Okay. That, yeah, that absolutely did. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, Reason for the question is that you know uh, uh, commercial space is good for the town, obviously, right? We obviously need residential space as well. Uh, so you know, I really appreciate the first building that's up and the businesses that you know you guys have attracted to the town. That's really good for the town, especially a downtown. So thank you very much for that. You've done a great job. Uh, I just my concern would be going forward that we still uh, you know try to maintain the overall square footage of commercial space that we intended to put in at the beginning. That's really my only question. So I, I don't have any issue with making these residential buildings um, and not doing the commercial. I just, you know, I just would like to see in the future the focus continue to be on a good ratio of commercial to residential units. Yeah, well, it's a great comment and I can speak to that. I mean, I think that these particular units based on sort of where they present and what they are, um, seem to make sense to to keep them all residential. The other units that we have um, are not really; they just present better um, for uh, you know for commercial. And our our goal is always, I mean, in our presentation, all of them are, all the others are mixed use, and this was as well. But it was commercial slash residential, and I think that that was it, that was that was in our mind the thought was these ones might. Um, you know, might make more sense to, to be that way. And I think just because, you know, we, we do have, I'm pretty sure, is it, is it 37, Julie? Do you remember? That? Yeah, it is 37 um, businesses that we're talking about right now. So I think it's, you know, so this, this would take two commercial, uh, t uh, well, actually, takes four small commercial spaces away, I guess. Um, but we're, um, I, I think they are, you know, they're, the smaller spaces, and I think in the, at the end of the day, we're still going to have a really strong presence of of um, commercial activity going on on site. Question? Yeah, that's great. I'm sure that, you know, based on the absorption rate of the commercial, you'll build as much as the town can absorb. I mean, it would make sense to me. So, uh, thank you very much for those answers. I appreciate that, John. Right. Yeah, John. I I was looking at the plans. Do, is there any plans for an elevator in any of these buildings? Yes, that's a great question. Um, the uh, the bigger buildings will have to have an elevator in them, um, and we haven't. You know, those are next phase buildings that will all have to have an elevator in them. What we're doing right now are smaller buildings around the perimeter, and those are such that they don't they don't require elevators. Okay. Thank I got you. a question from the last time you were here. You had mentioned that the bank was not going in, mm -hmm. and that was being changed to residential. Well, so there would be a loss there as well. Yeah, no, I I think what we're looking at right there, and I think each one of these we have to look at. So the bank, um, I, I think, I mean, you know, our original plan started uh, right right when COVID was was happening. You know, it pre, it's essentially pre-COVID planning is what we had. So a lot has changed, even though you know we're kind of nearing the time where COVID can't be used as an excuse for anything anymore, but our planning happened then and things have changed a lot. So our plan at the bank site, I believe, was the, the bank on the lower level and office on the upper level and then residential above that. Um, the bank 
the banks are not investing in brick and mortar right now. Um, and we just we regret that. We wish we could convince somebody to go in because we'd love to have a bank in the, you know, in the village area. <clears throat> um, and then office space is, it's challenging right now. I mean, all of these things will come back. If we waited five years, ten years, we would find a bank to go in there. We would find office space use. But, um, but you know what? The the question I guess is how long do we wait? And. I don't. We're not impatient. I think we, but we have waited for a decent amount of time, and we feel it's prudent to look at a different path forward on it. Um, but I, I do think that um, the the ultimate, uh, you know, reconciliation can certainly happen in the in the the last bigger buildings. I mean, the the rear quadrant building, I think, was, I believe, that in of itself was ninety units or ninety one units or something like that, right? So. As I think what we're trying to do, and this is what we what we strive to do, is design each building. Uh, you know, we first we designed the whole project. We did our best to say, okay, this is what we're thinking, but we never want to kind of go brain dead at that point and say, okay, that's what we're doing and that's it. Each step of the way, we want to look at each project and see what makes sense. Um, you know, uh, and that's why. This went from a square building to something with a little bit of character in it, you know, and that was, it's, I mean, I know it's pretty simple drawings, but a lot of effort sort of has gone into figuring that out. And so the bank building, I think the same thing will happen. Um, and I think, you know, because of the change in that, again, we'll have to bring that one back before the planning board. And, um, and so, I, I mean, I can say that that one will likely have, because the second floor office space doesn't really seem to make sense at this point. Um, but I think when we look at designing that, um, we're going to take into account the streetscape. We're going to take into account what the current needs seem to be and present a design that will be different than a bank and, and office space. So I think uh, short answer is, yeah, it will be probably have more residential component to it. Um, but ultimately, the larger building in the end certainly can be, if it seems like it's too much, can be reduced um, one thing is um, I read the findings of fact and conditions of approval for all the approved buildings these two that was at 16 and 18 were the only ones that said that the first floor would have a mix of residential and commercial all the other buildings it says it's just going to be commercial mm -hmm. on first floor the rest second and third would be residential that's where it's at right now yeah, and if, if I think about all the other buildings that we're looking at, um, I don't believe any of them have uh, residential on the ground floor. A couple of them, the rear, quadr quadr rear quadrant one, and then uh, and the one on the corner, um, those have parking underneath, and they have commercial liners in the front. Um, yeah, and others, the the, uh, the bigger one right on Main Street, which would be 3 and 5 Main Street, is intended to be a, a bigger um, type use on the ground floor. So, yeah, I think that's still pretty accurate. But I think it was, in, in our mind, um, and I apologize that it didn't present this way, but it was kind of a, you know, either or type of situation. Yeah, um, yeah it's just how it was written in the, the findings of fact is that it, sure. that for these two buildings, they were supposed to be, uh, was it like primarily um, commercial with residential? At, at I least don't half believe of it, I... more than half of it was supposed to be commercial. Mm -hmm. The rest was going to be residential. So this, that's what the change is now. You're just yeah, changing sure. it from half commercial to all residential. Okay. Um, and what are the actions today, Hannah? Just approving this question? for the conditional use. Is there any actions? Yeah, I don't. It's a good question. I need being honest. Irish. I need their approval of the board to be able to issue their permits that I've been sitting on, pending this uh, hearing. Correct. So, is it considered a site plan amendment then, since they're changing yeah. that part of it? Okay. I don't know, but this project in particular, it's a little bit fuzzy just because there's a little bit of leeway left to the developers once the approval was given um, to make slight changes and things like that. 
Um, so since they're not coming in with a full, you know, footprint change with, um, you know, parking in a different place, something like that is a little bit different than a typical site plan amendment would be. Um, but overall, I guess they're technically amending their site plan in this sense. That's the only approval yeah, I have. I mean, I'd settle for an informal vote. <laughs> I just need to know that you guys aren't going to put me on the stand when they, uh, when they do this. <laughs> So, can I, can I ask you? go ahead, Les. Yeah, go ahead, Les. Oh, you know, we, we talked about um, issues just, like, you know, abuse issues being uh, uh, administrative changes, right? And so my question on this, is this one of those issues that potentially could be an administrative change, or is it because it goes from commercial to residential that it really we really need to vote on it? The reason that uh, we had you guys, or in my in my view, and the reason that I brought this to Hannah that it, that it is before you guys is because it is specifically called out on the plans and such. Um, and I got word from um, behind me that we need to do a vote on the amendment, but that's the reason. It it wasn't. It was because it was called out specifically. Um, even if we were to you know, look at what I can do administratively without you guys. Anything that is actually specifically spelled out by the planning board or or by the applicant and approved by the planning board, that way I cannot come back to you guys. That's why I've been kind of picky on wording on some of these things that have been approved to give a little more leeway so they don't have to come do this stuff with you guys. Um, make Understood. It a little Thank you for clarifying. So, so I think what we're looking for is a uh, vote to approve the amended subdivision plan. Yes. Yes. If that's Site the case, plan, I would yes. make a motion. Site plan, yeah. Site plan, yeah. I would make a motion to approve the amended subdivision plan. Site, site plan. To, re site to residential. Plan. To approve the amended use. site plan. Right. Yes, <laughs> I'm making a motion for what I... He wants I'll, to make I'll that second motion. that motion. Okay. For the discussion, uh, just just a, a point of reference that um, I think it's great to have you come in and, and give this kind of a a presentation, even though it may not be the one you intended to give um, for public information. Because I think a lot of times when projects are put out there with uh, this is what we're thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. but then it kind of ends up looking a little different. I think mm -hmm. that transparency is incredibly important to the public mm -hmm. to see that you're still coming to us and showing what the changes are. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we're going to have any problem approving them. I just really value having you in front of us, showing us what those adjustments are. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I got a question. Based on where we were and what they had, as far as commercial, what you said, 37 to start, mm -hmm. and where we're going, would it be a reasonable ask, not tonight, but down the road, if, if they can present something, like we, I think the last time you said you would come in, you know, every couple months or something, and just where this is going, so the town yes. has a better idea? Yeah, I believe Terry was going to work with Julie about getting them on the schedule for periodic updates right, just to come in and, and keep that transparency know. going and they've been more than willing I just right. don't know where Terry's at but, but just just like we said for the public now you know if things things do change and, and I know yes. that I and a lot of it a lot of it we have to roll with and they're very good about right. communicating that but okay. um, you know it's it's something that Terry is working on getting them regularly scheduled somewhat okay. regularly scheduled not obviously every month or anything mm -hmm. too yeah. outrageous but yeah. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Les? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Tom? Yes. Yes. Rick? All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right. Next in new business is Berwick Police Department parking lot expansion U004 142 I 1 zone BCI. Thank you guys for coming. And I'll, I'll have Terry See you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Those Tim Town, I'm the police chief. 
Um, we kind of talked about this when we discussed the fence issue, um, so I'm just formally coming back to um, get the permit. Um, we're again extending the back parking area that will now abut the community garden. Um, it is not paved, it's uh, reclaimed uh, pavement, which is what uh, the back half of our parking lot is already um, made of. The same company, Radon Construction, who did the site work for the development of the fire department and upgrades to the police department, and did the gravel parking area that exists now, will be the same company coming back in to match the grade, match the material. Um, the size is, um, as stated on the plan, 65 feet by um, 45 feet. You will see, though, there's some space there, uh, more or less for information. There's a, there's a buffer between um, the end of the parking area and the stockade fence uh, for snow storage, so that will be open space. In the very rear right corner of the um, proposed expanded parking area is a 30 by 30 enclosure uh, chain link fence, six foot high with two 14-foot gates uh, to be used for an impound yard. There it is. Yep. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and I know we've discussed this uh, with the community garden. So um, is there any questions, comments? Did you say two 14-foot gates? Yes. Okay, just trying to make sure that the notes reflect what you actually said. Thank you. Yes, I have a question about the um, reclaimed paving. Does that create uh, what's considered pervious paving for drainage considerations? Hannah, you want to take that one or you want me to? Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button. Go ahead, Arish. Uh, do you want to answer Les's question about the... Uh, so this is switching from, from reclaimed to regular pavement? No. No, no. Yes. okay, it's going to be reclaimed. Reclaimed. So Les is asking if the reclaim is going to count as impervious versus pervious pavement. I don't think so. For drain. Because it should it should not compact enough to put, to completely block the rain. So it should still be pervious. We usually don't count reclaim in as a or for impervious. You know, it's just the only, my only question is, you know, directed to make sure that we're not overburdening the uh, current drainage system by adding more parking spaces there. That entire the, that entire area is under a, a uh, we have the MS4 stormwater there. We have some detention ponds and all of that stormwater has okay, been reviewed for for this project. So. Um, I didn't get any word from Christy that it would be a problem in regards to what we already have there or that we needed to take any additional steps to amend the, the current water uh, remediation there. In, in regards to that, the, the, the pavement that is there now, the recurrent pavement, she has looked at before and considered that something that the water can uh, yeah, make it, its, its way it's through. Pervious, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, we don't, I mean, <clears throat> There's no situation I've encountered yet that we've counted it as pervious or impermeable, but um, just wanted to let you know that that is all already uh, has a lot of treatment systems in place and we do inspect them regularly. Um. I've looked through it, and if all the questions have been answered, I would like to make a motion that this application be voted on as complete. I will second that motion. Okay, further discussion? Roll call vote, Les? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Don? Yes. Rick? Yes. All right. Uh, next is scheduling the public hearing. Um, we already have one for the fourth. Is that going to be too much if we do, if we add that? I don't think so because I can't imagine that this is going to be a contentious public hearing and I okay. don't really believe the uh, other one will so be there. Well, so. We don't need a sidewalk because we've already no, we been do. there. Yep. Yeah, we've already seen that. So. so 
we'll do that on fourth. On the fourth. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank Carrie's going to kill me, but that's okay. That's all right. That's on the fourth. Rather yep. you than us. Yep. <laughs> so if I'm not here on the fourth, you all know that Terry really? killed me for yep. setting up all of this. At I'll dig the grave. All right. So next is when the is second public meeting? comment. Um, just two weeks from today and then the fourth. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay. You too. A couple things I forgot. Um, when this happened, the school was not notified and the parents weren't notified, so they couldn't, they didn't know, th there was no school bus. It couldn't get through our, our area, so there's nobody to pick up the kids, and it was a really a difficult thing for a lot of parents. I asked, what are you guys doing? And they said, well, we're taking our kids and we're driving to find a bus stop where the bus is coming to pick up, to have our kids get picked up in the morning so just going forward when there's this kind of construction that should be something to be considered and also we haven't been able to get our mail and so uh, and people work and they the post office is at open times if you work you can't get there so we've only got our mail two times in like two weeks so that's another thing to consider and there was one other thing but I can't remember so I'll just thank you guys all so much and uh, thank you all right thank you informational items okay I have a couple for you guys and uh, so I'm trying to, to nail down the date but I did speak with Jay over at the sewer department today yeah, ask you about that. and we're gonna either do this on March 28th or April 11th I'm waiting for him to check his schedule I didn't know if any of you guys know offhand if you have any preference um, March 28th and April what? 11th. 11th. The in-between meeting dates. Okay. Um, so you'll let us know. Yeah. Uh, okay. You guys keep an eye out for that email. The question was, did uh, would 4 or 4.30 work best for you guys? Yeah. Jay is amenable to both. What day of the week are those? It's days? a Thursday. Thursday, Thursday so okay. Yeah, yeah. They work. Um, 4.30 for 4 me. Yeah. 4.30? Okay, so I'll just tell Jay whichever day at 4.30. I really think we're probably leaning towards the 28th, just so you know, because of his monthly meeting schedule. Okay. But and I will say, going to the water department helped me. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, that was it's, great. It's, it's, you yeah. got what we were asking. What you needed. Yeah. You got what just you needed. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're, the, the water department has a 1,000, roughly a 1,000 hookups. They said it wouldn't be an issue until we basically quadrupled that. Yes. Right? Until there's four to 5,000 people on city water is when we'll have an issue. Not four to 5,000 people, no, four to 5,000 hookups. Hookups. Yes. hookups. Yeah, that's really So there's awesome. plenty of room for expansion. And additionally, let's not forget, they are looking at expanding their... Um, Facility. Their facility yeah. and doing their to have right. an extra filter tank and then yeah. also to have the um, filter pond out back. So that uh, and they're looking at an emergency, working towards an emergency uh, backup yeah. with yeah. connection with uh, yeah. across the across oh, the river. Yeah, because yeah. yes. yeah. um, before they reconstructed the bridge, there was a hookup. And then when they redid the bridge, I guess it was on our part that we did not want the hookup. And now we're now trying we to get the hookup, hookup again, <laughs> which that would help significantly um, just in case of times of drought or extreme yeah. can we get the Can we get the natural gas, too? Uh. <laughs> that would be nice. That. Different, <laughs> different phase. Yeah, different that's, phase. that's Well, I mean, if they're hooking up pipes, what's, what's the difference? You're adding it's another, another pipe. It's just another pipe. Yeah. Because there's only one I want to drink out of. <laughs> 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 All right, let's be real. Um, um, so Hannah and I are um, Hannah and I are in debate over who is going to mention this to you. I'm actually I'll, I'll take it, Hannah. I'm actually kind of surprised that it didn't come up when uh, when he was presenting. But just so you're aware, you remember all the fun we had with the joint meetings with South Berwick? Yeah, don't. Yeah. We get to do it in the other direction. So uh, Mr. Springer presented. He is actually on the uh, North Berwick. Planning board agenda for his uh, subdivision for the nine lots on the other side of what we approved. Paul and I already went to the last. We one went to the last one. 
Oh, they that just, was sometime last year. Yeah. yeah they just, uh, there was an issue, uh, there was a major issue, so they were turned down last right. year. So now I guess the, uh, and Hannah, interrupt me at any point in time, please, by all means, but I believe that ordinance issue has been resolved, so now they're coming through with that, uh, with they that, will. so we'll be. Yeah. It was determined at that meeting that the area that they wanted to build on was, could not be buildable by ordinance. Yes, and I believe that yeah, has been I, corrected. I believe the issue was that a cluster subdivision, I don't know if it was that zone specifically or throughout town, um, had to be on a community, it was either water or yes. septic. Yes. Um, and the, this presentation, which will be their sketch presentation, is on the 14th uh, for the North Berwick agenda. Um, it is a conventional subdivision. So without looking into the ordinance too closely at any point yet, um, I think that is what allows them to. So this forward. is the subdivision that's going to connect to this four unit so Diamond Hill. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it'll be very similar to the project in South Berwick where the only part that's it's actually in access. Berwick is the yeah. road. Okay. Um, because everybody has to come out onto Diamond Hill in correct. Berwick, right? Yep. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay, and that's what, March 14th, you said? March 14th at 6.30, yep, I have time. the agenda here. <laughs> and fortunately, he's uh, first after their review of previous minutes, so okay. it'll be the early part of the meeting. I won't be able Pay to be there. You won't be able to be there. Well, hopefully we have a for that yep. meeting. I mean, it seems like We're it's just it. a simple, for us, it's just information. And yeah, I don't think you guys have to be there for the sketch plan, um, okay. but once they move forward, Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, and actually, I don't think that um, we can stop no, we uh, the exit of traffic onto our road. So right. uh, there's not a whole lot for us to do except yeah, know what they're doing. Is, yeah. So I, I think what we might want to do yes, is a little exactly. <laughs> yeah, too late. <laughs> Very late. Could we have. Do we want to do, uh, what were our options last time with the joint meetings, Hannah? Uh, have a quorum there. Um, or have the code enforcement and SMPDC there at, on our behalf. Is That's that perfect. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like, I believe well, that was. I like yeah. that. I thought you guys yeah, liked do. me. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. We I would. Do. I don't. If that's an option that yeah. is able to be done, I don't know between James and Hannah. I I have no problem doing that. Um, yeah, we just have to look back at. We'll look, look at what our works. options are yeah. and uh, probably the South Berwick one. There was an opportunity. For you guys to not go. Yes, and we didn't take it. And yes. after a few meetings, yeah. we realized that we didn't really have much say in it. So it was so very, it, a lot of it was it's very. It's just informational. Like, yeah. yes, yeah. This is, we're going to be hooking up to this road. Well, we went there thinking that we had some say in it. <laughs> right. You're right. And, uh, well, we and about the third meeting, we determined we have nothing to say here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can so vote you on probably it, have a, um, a vote. And you can do that essentially the first meeting if you'd like to right. say right. And we'd be voting we're good. Here Thanks for telling that. us. Yeah. What's that? And we'd be voting here on that. Is that correct? No. No, no we, we have voted to go. You vote at you go to their meeting or you have a joint meeting, which would be with North Berwick, and I believe your board will make a vote saying essentially, Thanks for letting us know. They're good to use our road. We don't need to be involved from this point forward. Okay. And we will just keep you in the know if there's anything that comes up that you guys really need to know, um, but you won't have to continue going to all the meetings. Okay. So we would need a quorum. Yes, we would need a quorum. Yes. Yes, but it wouldn't be yeah, at this meeting. It would be at their first, like, actual review. Okay. This is just me. So on the completeness, basically, would that be... <laughs> Probably yes. Okay. Well, we'll figure out the options and present you, Hannah. You yeah. and I can. You and I and Terry and and if needed, we'll rope James and we can all talk uh, next week and we'll figure out the options and present you guys with like a coherent set of options. Okay. Because right now, I don't think any yeah. of us really remember <laughs> what all this, yeah. what all our yeah. options were. Then we didn't expect to face it again so quickly. Mm -hmm. So I believe that was all I had. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I'll so, second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. 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 Aye.